everyone, in this training video, we're gonna cover our Skid Steer 201 training. Check this out. Okay, as with everything, three points of contact, getting in or out of equipment, skid steers always end up getting people that slip their ankles through or something there and that opening come in here. I am running a, it's a Case TR310. Um, so first thing I wanna do is get this thing fired. Let's turn the power on. So first thing, we're gonna put seatbelt on, which So seatbelt and then the lock bar in front of you there. So again, I'm running a KCR 310, it's a brand new machine. Uh, first thing I want to give a shout out, United Rentals in South St. Paul uh, actually hooked us up with this machine to do some training videos. So we're hoping to work with them more, but again, thank you very much. They helped us out putting out some of these training content. Now this is our 201 video. If you haven't seen our 101, uh, that's where it's going to cover the very basic operations. So we have a 101, we also have a 360 101 video that you can see all around. So I'm going to go a little more advanced on some of the techniques here. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about grading, a little bit about spreading dirt. Uh, we're going to tip the machine, or at least show you what that looks like. Uh, we're going to change out our accessories, and then finally we're going to talk about driving on slopes. So those are kind of the main things we'll cover here. So for this machine, I've already done the pre-op inspection. I already know my site, know exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, on this one, the newer case machine, uh, we just got a little button here to turn this on. Parking brake goes off. I'm running standard ISO controls here. Uh, so that's similar to CAD controls. So my right is all my boom and bucket, left is my steering. So bring this up. So the first thing I want to cover is this, you know, grading with the skids here. It's probably one of the more common things that's done. And it's uh, a technique that definitely, I, I, I don't claim to be an expert on any of this. Uh, I think you guys have seen other episodes that I've stated that. So I just kind of share what I've learned. So the biggest thing here is just getting your, generally you're dropping that boom all the way down. So you know it's flat. That'll be flat to the bottom of your tracks. And then it's just rolling your blade so it's flat. And this is where you're just kind of visibility, you're watching the front of it. And then I'm just driving forward there. And again, it's subtle little either curling or uncurling it. The key is not to do anything too dramatic with that. So similar to a dozer is trying to maintain some load in front of that so you don't dig in. So again, our site's not, uh, if I can go over here, I can see some areas that need a little bit of grading. But you'll see how some will pick up there, and then we're gonna kinda let that fill in any holes. This one I'm actually gonna curl up and just take back the other way. So we'll spin this around, but you can kinda see what I graded right there. And again, I had a little bit, now I've got a little bit of material, so my bucket's all the way down, and it's just rolling that blade to not let it bite in. It's a little bit tougher when you can't see your blade initially. This is something that, as with I've said with a dozer, the more stick time you get, the better you get. But it's kind of feeling your tracks and what they're lifting up or driving over probably one of the more difficult things to master but as long as you're pushing some dirt in front of that blade you'll see how it kind of spreads out and then I can roll that blade and let that drive out so there you can kind of see that was again I didn't take you know if you had to cut down a little bit that's where you're gonna make your adjustments there now the next piece I want to talk about is just about kind of loading and carrying you know so if you were to actually be spreading material typically we're gonna go in again I'm not gonna go over the basics on operating if you want to see that go into our 101 but let's say, I mean, right now, i am just got, this is sand. This is, you know, nothing if we were to load gravel or anything like that. Typically, you're gonna wanna work at your area farthest out. So you wanna get as far, you know, however far you're carrying that material and then work your way backwards. Now, there's a lot of different strategies on how to do this. Uh, you know, one way is kind of raising up and working backwards, and I can kind of do this right here and kind of show you. But some way it's kind of as I'm doing this, I can see underneath it and watching where I'm backing up to, but kind of spreading it that way. 
And I can kind of do it nice and even there. The other way is spreading forward and then back dragging in reverse. So if I do that same, Biggest thing with skid steer is just your visibility. This case machine is actually pretty good. I got a big rear view uh, mirror above my head that wraps around, but looking where you're going. Now of this, let's say I was to go all the way out. I'm gonna do this a little bit closer here. But this is where you're kind of taking a large scoop, raising it up, and then you're spreading in forward. So it's gonna get uneven. And you do this at relatively high speeds because I'm spreading this out as I, once I get out to the spot I'm going to. Once I'm done there, you, to even it out, you can basically drop that blade. I got a float on this one. It's just pushing that button and I'm bringing it backwards. And then this will kind of even it out or spread it out. And then the key is just letting that at the end of that thing, pulling back. Let's demonstrate that one more time. So again, we would go out a far distance away. So let's say if I was going further out to dump and then I start raising it to wherever if I was trying to spread material and I would go out to the very end, so I'm working backwards. So spreading again, depending on how much you need, dropping that blade, and then floating it on the way back. Kind of evens out what you just did. Now, depending, you know, if you're gonna come over with a Harley rake or some other device to really, it depends how detailed you need to get to actually be nice, nice and smooth there or level. Um, but again, this is just a way to, you're taking scoops, you're doing this relatively fast. So if I did that one, depending on what thickness, I'd go, I'd grab another one, and I would start right here with my next. That's where I'd want to end, and then I'd work backwards there. The other thing I want to talk about from a safety, kind of what not to do. This video is going to combine a little bit of what not to do as well, that we've heard some great comments. Uh, you know, the biggest thing with a skid steer, biggest area you're going to get, well, two things. First of all, I'm going to get a loaded bucket here. Now. This one, right now, I have auto level on, and most of the newer machines will have this. So as you'll see, if I give it some power here, if you're looking at this outside, it's actually curling that bucket away from me. Now that's great, because if you don't do that, if I bring this back down, it won't curl it going down. Most machines have an auto level. So on here in this case machine, it's over here on the left. If I push that off, so now it's just gonna be fixed. So what happens there though, if you'll see, if I bring this up, you see how that bucket stays curled? That's where you start dumping material. So you'll see it's already starting to come. You'll see hitting the glass. Uh, so that's what you want to avoid. So generally I recommend keeping the auto level on, but even if you have the auto level on, that doesn't mean the machine. So if I turn that on, it's still gonna let me override it. Um, and that's where, if you got a cab, you're gonna dump it all over your roof. If you don't have a cab, you're gonna be really dirty. Um, so being really careful with that to keep that, roll that bucket as you go out. Second piece, the biggest area where we're going to go over in a sec where people get in, new operators get in trouble. Anytime you've got this bucket at any kind of height, that's where this machine is the least amount of stable. This is where everyone in a skid steer that's ever tipped one has gotten in trouble as they go too fast and their center of gravity is so high. These machines can be relatively dangerous if you don't respect them and understand that smaller frame comes at a price that you're not, you don't have as big a base to balance yourself. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I've got a full bucket here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna replicate, you know, well not replicate, I'm gonna tip over the machine. I think a lot of operators, if you don't experience this for yourself in a controlled environment, uh, it really, uh, for the first time it catches you. So. Uh, first things first, obviously make sure you're safe anytime. This is what you're going to see why you wear a seatbelt in a machine. Uh, this is extremely important that you're wearing a seatbelt in a skid or any machine in case it does. The protection cage is only going to help you if it keeps you in the seat. Second piece is don't panic. Uh, I've, I've seen this happen on our site where we had a new student uh, had an accident with a machine, flipped it forward like this. And uh, generally what happens with these is the foot gets lodged down on the, the gas, the throttle there, and they panic a little bit. So it's uh, first things first, just calm down. Make sure you are all right, you're stable, everything's clean. When I say stable, you're at least not flipping down a hill or anything like that. Then you can try and rectify it. Most common accident in a skid steer is tipping it forward because that's where you're playing with that center of gravity. That's an extremely, as much as you don't want to, you don't want to get there in the first place. If you do though, it's extremely easy to fix. Um, so that's something that I'm going to show you how to right the machine. You just use the boom arm. 
Now the other ways, if you're rolling it sideways or over its back, there is no solution for that one, okay? Uh, the other thing is understanding why you have your cab. You, got, you are enclosed in a cab here. The back, you'll see little tabs above you here. There is a way to get out of the rear of a skid steer, so understand that if the worst case were to happen, you fall over the tools in front, you can't open the door, understand how to do it. So, this environment, I've got a loaded bucket. I'm gonna keep this up, and I kinda just built a trench here. Cause I'm not gonna try and go too hard, but what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna curl this bucket up, and eventually, and if I just get it that way, I'm gonna give it a little bit more height and I'm just gonna kick it into reverse. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen. Now for this purposes, I'm actually gonna grab this because I don't wanna go, uh, wanna be holding on to something. So if you see, boom. So this is what typically will happen on a job site. Again, a seat belt has helped me. I'm safe in here. Now again, typically what's gonna happen, you're gonna have an operator's gonna have their foot on the pedal. They're gonna be panicking, things like that. This is where just making sure your foot's off, looking around, I'm safe. The machine's sideways like this, so it's not good, but I can right myself. Now with that, it's pretty easier just using that boom arm, and you know, they got the boom up. So now if I just start pushing that forward, you see right away, it starts actually rocking me back uh, like that. And then I can start slowly. The key is get, get that bucket unloaded. You know, that's all that weight. So as I'm going here, you'll see after I unload that bucket. And there we go. Now, you see how simple that was? Obviously, we're in a controlled environment, uh, but I think it's important for you to understand those kind of concepts ahead of it happening. So uh, if that were to happen, even an instant like that where you did tip, I would still recommend I would park the machine, I'd get out of it, make sure there's no damage, make sure I'd report it to a supervisor on site, just let them know what happened. Uh, and, and again, just make sure you're safe. Uh, you know, that adrenaline kicks in when something like that happens, you might have hurt, you know, I had banged your knee or something like that. You want to make sure you're all right. So we're good there. Okay. Now, one final thing I want to cover, and you know, I'm not going to, I won't use that exact same hole, uh, but I don't have muddy conditions here. The other typical thing you see in a skid steer is they get stuck. You know, they are track machines, depending on what they have, uh, what materials. If you were to get in a muddy environment, you may see this machine actually get stuck and you'll see the tracks not moving. The key there is use your tools that you have. So this high, this has a lot of hydraulic force, this bucket. So a lot of times you can put this, I roll it in towards that. If I push back and push this into the ground, I can actually roll this. And if you see right now, it's actually pushing without me even using the tracks, it's gonna roll me back. So you can almost do this. It's almost like a, I call it paddling kind of. Um, but if you do things like that, you're pushing forward and out like that, that can help you get out of a muddy situation. And I don't really have the mud here, but that gives you a good demonstration for if you do get the machine stuck, try and raise that boom and use that bucket to kind of backhand your way out of that. So, okay. Now we're gonna go over and quick, I'm gonna show you some accessories. So changing out accessories. So this on case, each one's a little bit different. Uh, for case, I love actually this. They have these little holes that stick up here. So if I hold this, I got an unlock button there. You'll see these little uh, red popped up. So now I know I'm disengaged. If you can't see, again, the camera, they're right there. I can see they're all the way out. All I do then, roll it out, and I'm free of that. Then, drive on over, slow, and then I'm just trying to roll this, go down. This machine is extremely sensitive. and then you're just slowly trying to roll that apart. Now, after you have it on this, you know that it defaults to lock. So right now I've got the red pin sticking up. If I just hold that all the way to the left, you'll see it lock my pins down. You always wanna do a ver uh, verify first. So as you go down, if you roll up on it, it would pop out if it wasn't on there. So that's one way you can tell. You can also look at pins. Once you know it's locked, if you look under there, you can see the pins. I can see the pins are popping through. Again, each manufacturer is a little bit different. Some will have arms that swing up, but obviously you just want to make sure it's locked. And we uncurl that. I'm gonna... And then I'm gonna unlock it. One little quick tip here, if you're a contractor hauling these, you probably already know this. Uh, if you want to get your forks on your bucket, I didn't realize this. 
Uh, this is actually one uh, I just saw. You can pick them up. Now, they can't lock on this way, but you can pick them up, and this is what you can do is this, just so you can get them into your contractor and into the bucket. So then I'm just setting those down. So now I'm in the bucket. Then all I have to do, attach the dirt bucket. There we go. Go all the way up and lock the pins. Okay, my pins are locked. So if I were to want to take this onto a trailer now, I could secure both of them. You need to have base two for one. Okay, I'm just gonna dump. Once you get to the job, it's usually pretty easy just to slide these out of the dirt bucket. There we go. Excellent. Okay, final piece, we're gonna talk about going up a incline. As I'm going here, most skids here have a, well, the two speed, depending on what side. So on this, it's a left thumb trigger. It makes you travel a little bit easier, a little bit faster. Going up inclines, final piece I want to cover real quick. Uh, you know, two different schools of thought here. You know, if you have a loaded bucket, then you've got that weight up front. Uh, so you can drive that thing up and you've got the counterweight behind you, all the engine and everything behind you. Uh, so it really depends on the slope. Sometimes going up in reverse, uh, if you know where you're going to, because it's tough to see out of a skid steer, can be safer. The biggest piece too when driving on any slope avoid driving at a pitch. Uh, you know, with a skid steer, especially a rubber track machine, you can actually roll a track right off of that. So if you're going at too much of a slope there at an angle, you know, you could potentially roll off a track. So you want to generally be going in line one way or the other. So again, I don't have an empty bucket and this slope is not really that bad, but I know exactly where I'm going. So this is where looking over my shoulder and going over backwards. But that's often a better way, depending on the pitch of the slope that you're going up, understanding all that weight's in the back, so you're not gonna roll it. Or like I said, the other option is, if you have a loaded bucket, you're gonna add a lot of weight to your front end and just keep it down low uh, to basically pull you down there. So, okay, come back down. Again, coming over these things, there's always a tipping point. Now to park it again, bucket flat. Don't be that guy that parks this with the boom partly up because once you shut the machine off, you're gonna realize the door doesn't open. You look like an idiot on a job site. So you're all the way down, parking brakes on, solid red up there, and seatbelt off, and now we're gonna shut the machine off. Guys, thanks for watching. That was our Skid Steer 201. I know we covered a lot of material. Uh, put in the comments below any tips or tricks that you guys have learned. Uh, and then again, if there's any other videos you want to see us make, please put in the comments below. Check out our other videos in our Learn playlist. Thanks for watching.